Hello, my name is Danielle Morris. I'm the supervisor of recreational therapy for Roger C. Peace. I'll go back a little bit. <laughs> um, I've been a recreational therapist for about 20 years um, with personal health in 2008. So um, this is where we have this. Oh, yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> um, and I'm super excited to be here today to talk to you guys about our youth basketball team, the Rolling Tigers. And we have some superstars with us here today. Um, they decided to join us. Some are on spring break and some just, you know, using some of the class learning opportunities. So I'm super excited that they're here to help us explain the team and what it means for them. So I'm not sure. Apparently they were on the news this morning. Um, they're all over the place these days. They're in the paper twice this week, uh, two different papers. So this is them. Um, this is winning the national championship a few weeks ago in Wichita, Kansas. So an amazing experience um, that I'll let them explain to you, because I might cry another time, <laughs> and they'll be excited. But basically, um, our youth wheelchair basketball team, they're called the Rolling Tigers, um, we were developed, we started the team in 2017. The first year was just development, trying to get players from the community and learn how to play the sport in general, because Nobody had ever played a competitive sport before that was on our team. And so just learning the rules, learning cohesiveness, trying to um, work on using the equipment because a massive sports chair is not something um, our players were used to using. So they can explain that to you some a little bit later. Um, and Elena's in her basketball chair. So you guys, if you've never seen one, we'll be able to check it out. Um, the wheels are cambered, which helps them turn faster and be able to pick up the ball on their own. Um, and so it's really exciting. But we, we've had six competitive seasons so far and two performances. Uh, I call it performance because uh, it's really awful. Awesome. <laughs> uh, at the NWBA National Championships. Last year, we placed fourth in the prep division, which was our fifth competitive year. So it's pretty amazing to even be on the national stage in your fifth season. Um, and then this year, we were first. Mm -hmm. So our players fought really, really hard. Um, all players included, it was, it was tough and it did an amazing job. And at the end, I'll show you a little clip um, of, that one of our players made. So it kind of helps you get the feel of the height and what everything was like. And also gives you a small demo of how the sport is played on, on the court. So we're the only youth competitive wheelchair basketball team in the state of South Carolina. And currently there are 34 teams. Um, and the prep division throughout the country. So it's pretty cool that we're the only one in the state of South Carolina we have to state. So uh, I think that's really neat. Um, and we compete, we travel to compete. So unfortunately, to play, it's not like some of the other teams in the area where you have a game every Saturday or you travel just, you know, locally, um, like the high school team to different schools in the area. So we have to travel kind of far. Um, we're in this piece, so we traveled to Charlotte, Birmingham, Atlanta, um, have been to Tennessee before, we've looked in the board, we may go there next year, I'm not sure, um, so we kind of stay in that, uh, um, we do have a home tournament, typically every year uh, in October at Clemson, so that will be exciting, that we have home travel conference on hours, so if you ever want to watch it, a lot of people are like, how do I see them play, um, if you ever want to watch it, we always stream it on our Facebook or if you're in any of those towns, you're welcome to come and watch it. But Clemson will be the closest one for all of you to come and observe or anybody that you yeah. know might be interested in um, playing to come and watch it also. They're welcome to come to practice too. Um, we practice on Thursday nights during the season from August through March um, at the St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. And we're grateful that there is kind of donation of their gym for us to be able to practice there every week. So anybody has any interest in it or telling somebody about it. That's where we practice and you can come and check it out here. Our current players, um, you can see that these are our current players on the team. I have um, Elena is down here at the bottom because she's um, a player who has aged out of the prep division and has been hanging out with us for a few years practicing to build up to the prep, the, the varsity division. So she didn't just let the sport go to the wayside. Um, if she wanted to play on a varsity team, she would have to travel to Charlotte, which isn't feasible for a lot of people to drive that far once a week to go to practice. So she's been hanging out with us. Um, 
Sophia is here, who's our newest player. She's from Easley, and then you can kind of see everybody else. We're generally in the upstate, but we do have a player that's even from Tennessee because it's the closest team to him. And so he travels several hours with him to practice. Um, one can get so, general idea we have 14 players on the current prep division. And once we break up to a varsity team next year, um, a handful of these players will be moving up to varsity. And then our prep players will stay, so we're hoping for new faces on each team. <laughs> um, these are our coaches. Lindsay Metz um, and Jeff Townsend. So Lindsay Metz is a child life specialist at the Prison Health Children's Hospital. She um, played on the Charlotte Hornets as a youth athlete and was competitive there. She also played at the University of Alabama, and she currently still plays with the Charlotte Hornets um, as an adult athlete, so she travels with their women. <clears throat> um, Jeff, he is a seasoned athlete as well. He's currently a lecturer with PRTM at Clemson University. He was a youth athlete also, and he grew up in Utah, and so Utah didn't have a youth wheelchair basketball team, so he had to play on an adult team um, as a kid. So he also traveled to the University of Illinois to play wheelchair basketball in college, and uh, he played with the adult Utah Will and Jazz. And then also right now, he's developing the Clemson wheelchair tennis team. He's one of their athletes on the team as well. And recently, he um, participated on the USA wheelchair rugby team and traveled internationally for that. So both coaches have a love for sports, a love for kids, and a passion to keep um, another sports going, especially competitively. So without them, we wouldn't be here. Um, they give all of their coaching is in mind. Um, and so I don't even know if you can put a price tag on how many hours they've been involved throughout the seven years, basically. So um, we're grateful for them and, and all that they give to us. And if you know anybody in the community um, who's interested in helping, because we're branching out to two teams, um, anybody that has that interest, we're, we're looking for extra coaches, I guess. No, no. It'd be in kind right now, just to say. <laughs> Um, so I said that laughing, but um, our team is 100% philanthropy funded. Uh, we fund it through grants, one of which uh, we just received last year from the Barber Stone Foundation to buy a new chair and extra tires and wheels. Um, it doesn't go a long way because everything is very expensive, but we appreciate it. So we keep adding up small grants, we get donations, and then in town like our coaches, and then people donate stuff to the team. Um, sometimes people, our players will donate their old chairs as they move up um, to a bigger size so that we can have it for another player. And then we do um, various different fundraisers. So as I said before, we have a junior prep team, their age is five to 13. And currently, I think our ages are seven to 14. Yes, so um, there's an age limit, kind of like when you start kindergarten. So as long as you're 13, at a certain day, you can still play. Um, and so we have some people that are 14 now, but they started the season at 13 at that time. Um, and next year, our ages for varsity will be 14 to 18. And so anybody is welcome to play wheelchair basketball that has a lower limb disability that prevents them from playing able body basketball. So not all of our players use a chair on a daily basis. Um, they can use them occasionally or um, only really use it to play wheelchair basketball. So this is it. So there's one player, um, I'll tell one story about a kid named Jonathan, who plays on the Charlotte Hornets, and he didn't use a wheelchair on a daily basis. So I was like, hey, you can talk about wheelchair basketball. He's like, I don't even use a chair. Like, gave me that, like, kind of <laughs> his attitude. Um, his mom drove him out to play, and then he continued to play with our team until he aged out, but then he is so committed that he travels to Charlotte, Charlotte and plays with their varsity. Um, and so... It's amazing to see that he opened his eyes a little bit to trying something new. And then now it's his chance and he's trying to play in college as well. So it's really exciting to see um, what a little push will do for some people to come in. Um, just to give you an idea of funding the team, um, each, uh, each chair can, like I just got a quote for a chair, they can be about $4,500 a piece. Um, every tournament that we go to is about $450. Um, there's a national fee that we have to pay, and then a yearly membership fee, and then each player um, pays for their own annual membership. 
and then the hotel for the team each tournament that we travel to and the jerseys. So there's like there's a lot of cost involved with it. And without the parents to it, um, to helping us fundraise and getting their kids to practice and doing all the things, you know, helping us find sponsors, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here. So we have a great group of um, parents who have become family to each other and they help us keep going. We help each other in different ways. Um, not just on the So that's really exciting. <laughs> Um, these the players are not my real children. I have three of my own children, but I really consider they're going to be like mine too. So I can give them a hard time. So. <laughs> um, these are just different ways that it may be on that flyer that I gave you, but as you're talking to different people in the community, or um, it's just a way to know about us, you can donate, but then also it takes you to a page that gives you a little more information about the team too. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, okay, so this is really neat. So Brandon might be embarrassed because he's in this photo, but I call them the Fab Four Originals. So um, Brandon is there on the left corner right there. This is our first season, and then here he is now. So seven years later, here he is. And then you can see little <laughs> the ball bigger than his whole body, and then he's right, right here. So I just thought it was a really neat comparison. Um, to show that the team has grown together and some players have come in and out throughout the years, but just to see their growth personally um, and all that they've given and how they've changed for the last few years. So, uh, that's gonna be so I wanted to share that with you. Okay, now I'm going to show you a quick video that one of our players, um, Ethan McWhorter, made for us. And it's from nationals, it's kind of a compilation, and some of it's training because you copied it, but it's just hopefully it will give you a great feel of what it, what wheelchair basketball is like and how exciting um, it can be. Oh, hold on. I guess I didn't check the sound. How do you do the sound? It should just play over through the uh, the HDMI cord. So as soon as you start playing it, if you tab over to the uh, it, YouTube. And not playing. Sorry, you don't. I want you to watch the video. You're not like one day before. What? What do you have to say? Well, I was father. I don't I want you to watch it. Um, does anybody else have time? Three, four hours. You I have to close the PowerPoint. Close the PowerPoint? Try that. I can do that. Because it isn't on the display. Is the display Chris, coming straight to her PC? Yes. There we go. Okay, there you go. Cool. Are we good now? And, uh, and where's the, is the video embedded or in a separate program? It's on YouTube, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll start out of it. Hopefully this works. It's not. It's so good without the video. Hold on. I asked him about it before we came in here. Can you come in here to stop? I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm not a tech kid. It's just we've done it wrong so many times okay. that I think I can do it. <laughs> Can you go grab Angela? She should be actually next door. Anyway, um, while she's working on that for me, uh, we'll go ahead and talk to some of the players. So what? We can make the sound to the Wi-Fi for this. Do it now. 
This is just a video recording of right now. Is tight. It sounds supposed to be coming through. Oh, everything works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brandon may for this, just so you know. <laughs> anyway, would you like to introduce yourself and then I'll hold out you? And... Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Noblet. I'm 13 years old and I've been for the last five years. Three kids, three daughters. I was paralyzed in 2016 by a cold virus that attacked my spinal cord. And the Rolling Tigers started that fall. Some of you may know we recently won the national championship, but it wasn't always that easy. When the team started, we didn't really won any. It was very convinced we got that year. Look where we are now. We have so many friends on our own team and the movement is by friendships otherwise. Second, hard work. We can't show up in the We have a minimum practice and work, but we can live by us. Last but certainly not least, teamwork. When a team can work together, well, and then rolling like a well oiled machine, the possibilities are endless. Clearly, this team would not have been possible without the love and support of our parents and members of the and generous donations for us to engage. I'll just go ahead and put this plug out there. If you choose to donate or know someone who might be interested in donating, please see our team manager extraordinaire, Danielle, and she will be sure that the funds get to the right place. I'm beyond grateful for this opportunity. I would love to open up the floor for any questions about what we're going to the game play. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, how long have you been playing since the game started? Okay, so, you said okay, you were six or seven years. Okay, okay. How okay. good? All right. Is that the anger and dark team? Yes, ma'am. And what was your name? Brandon Nolet. Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of the different rules from basketball versus bowler. I would say it's all the lots of it's like a little bit of chaos. Working. <laughs> All right, I turned it off. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I think it is. I'm um, All right. Okay. I think there's two videos playing at one time. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, it's like too sound buddy. That wasn't music. <laughs> I don't see anything else. Is your PowerPoint still open? No, no. Doesn't show anything else open. Oh, there's, there's a second tab. There's a second tab right there. Yeah, I still got one. 
Beautiful. Absolutely. So thank you um, for for watching that and bearing with my technical difficulties. So y'all, y'all want to come here too? All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So as far as fouls go, there um no double dribbles. So you can touch the ball and dribble. You have to dribble at least twice, or dribble once and then push twice. Um if you slap one, obviously that's a foul, but I think it's sort of depends on how you're gonna steal on that day. <laughs> um, you can only get an key for three seconds on offense, you can stay in as long as you like. Um, yeah. oh yeah, if you ran someone in your back wheel from, uh, from off the ground, that's a foul, but it can be, um, yeah, um, Oh, yeah. You turn your big wheel and they hit your big wheel, and their back tires come off. That's a charge. Um, any questions? No, this okay. is Elena. Okay. This is. You want to go for it? You know, this is Elena. She is a member of our varsity team. This is Sophia, who is also, will be this year, a member of our varsity team. That's Brandy, who is in the way. Yeah, so a little story about him. He is moving far, far away, and I'm really sad about it. Because he's a superstar player, but going to try to play with a team that <laughs> so um in Indiana. So that's really kind of gonna be um something cool for you for a minute, you know, so you can become part of their team. But it's really neat that he has found, I think, the wheelchair basketball as a sport and that his family, um, even though they have to move, they are able to find. What basketball is to you? Um, so when you, you know, in the game, I know just 
play any position on these teams. And if there's some open, they're going to have to guard him. And or if I am open, they will pass the ball to a huge and all of it. Not at all around, man. But outside of the Brent was kind of shy. Um, he got a send off from his school before his national championship. Um, they did not as he was going down long, even though he was embarrassed, it's all get out. <laughs> but I love the video, so he's one of the kids that I can get a smile out of. I know we're having a good day. Um, so that's really exciting, even though they're all trying to be a little hard at <laughs> not getting his smile. So for that, right there. Um, <laughs> But anyway, Brantley uh, used to play at Adam Sports prior to moving here. Sled hockey was something that he was involved in as a young kid, too. So can you compare sled hockey to basketball and how if you like basketball better? I definitely like basketball better because it's... Um, it's the biggest difference for me is mostly the temperature. It's, it's, yeah, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> But it's moving. Yeah. The other thing is you also it's not like you can get hit in the face with a basketball or something. You can get hit with like pretty much anything. You can get hit with the sled and it's all around the contact with sled hockey basketball or something in your chair. All around basketball. Yeah. 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 Alright, go back to you. They're not done. Just so you know. Sophia, you want to talk a little bit about? Um, Sophia is new to the team this year. Her family moved to the area. They traveled around a lot, um, and she was a fun art team. And I'll say one thing about her. Um, she's quiet too, but she chats it up when she wants it. So that's Ooh. exciting. But this is our new trophy case that took us forever a day to get. Um, but we're able to fill it, and I told my administrator, "It's like it's not big enough." These really, these trophies, as Brandon said, we didn't. I don't think we want any inside uh, the first. We took some. I don't remember. Well, I don't think we in the first season at all. Um, but these trophies, they won this year the Southeast um, Championship, Conference Championship, and won the Clemson tournament, and all the other trophies are from different things from the last two years um and so as they continue to grow and get better that's going to fill up really fast so i'll have to save up some more money to buy another one <laughs> um but it's just laid in our round of tp's lobby and rue happens to be she's one of our players she happens to be on this pop-up banner that we need to help celebrate our 50th anniversary of roger tp's um and so we put it right there and everybody it's it's just <laughs> time so sophia um was the first to see our trophy case and made sure that she got a picture by it and it may be one of those things Things that I cry when my mom said it to me, but um, exciting that she's really proud of being on the team. Um, being a competitive athlete and everything that it means to you is not something that you and I probably understand. Um, they are they feel it in a different way than you and I feel it because we can play anything we want to or learn anything that we want to. Um, but right now, our basketball team is the only competitive thing that they play. Um, so you want to explain a little bit about the team, what it means to you in basketball? It's just like really cool and fun. And I'm so excited to learn about it. So all the like tournaments and stuff are all new and all exciting and it's so much fun. Especially if you're nearly our winner yet, but yeah. not. <laughs> so it's just kind of the best part. So Sophia was super shy when she first came. And she just checked it out. I don't know. The recreational there is to see somebody for it and be excited about it. And so those nudges. Are important from parents and from 
family and friends too to even just try it, even though they feel um, a child might be or a adult might be interested or nervous about. Them. All right, tell us how many years played for prep three. Three? Okay. Um, so Elena aged out. He's going to age out what for two years now? Two. 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 So Elena's been hustling, coming to our practices for two years, not being able to travel to tournaments. Um, it really just shows that her drive and passion also. So she's saying, um, she's coming out and being a part of the team and providing support. To everyone else too and helping them um gain a competitive edge because she's a little older a little stronger and like helping um them learn some of those skills too so elena you want to talk to us a little bit about basketball and why you joined the team and what it means to you okay. is very shy. <laughs> she's really shy so elena why do you keep coming to practice yeah. She like it? Okay. Elena is no joke either. She wears these sports glasses, go, and she looks, I mean, before she even plays, looks super fierce. Like, like she's going to go after two other kids. Um, so it's kind of like some of the kids, um, like you may have your own kids and team sports, but they all have their own type, um, their own personalities and their own whatever. Sometimes people dye their hair. Sometimes Sophia had ribbons, let her all specially braided in her hair for the national championship. You have sprayed your hair green before, or it used to be green um, with green blood. <laughs> so it's like really cool to see that camaraderie too. You know how football players put black out? I mean, they do whatever. Um, and I think it's really exciting to see that as the same type of type and competitiveness as any other thing. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, so this is one of the basketball chairs that we play in. So there's obviously the front row bar, and that is where pretty much all of the contact happens. So if if she were to ram somebody and those wheels were to come off the ground, um, if they had their big wheel and she ran into that wheel, then um, and her wheels came off, that would be a charge. If she just hit somebody else while she was on the defense, it would be a chair foul. Um, and see what it's really, really light, made out of aluminum. There's no brakes, no brakes, that's a word. <laughs> the wheels are on a camber, so it go faster. So it's kind of like a mountain, I mean, sort of. And so it only hits one side of the tire, whereas some of the car tires are completely flat, so it makes contact. With the whole part of this only makes one pack with a little slipper. Um, if you flip, there one of the ways you can do it is to grab onto their front bar and have them push forward. And the way that this is works, it flips you back up. You can unbuckle because it's got two zip tie buckle, and that's inside. It has no ratchet. Um, you can unclip, grab your chair, and then pop back. <laughs> um, Joe, who is number three, who's one of the original guys, and she's gonna pull up a picture of him. He just stands up. Um, he cheats. He cheats. He doesn't even get out of his chair. <laughs> like Rob, he stands up and then flops back down. He is. He's in the back. Of the college <laughs> the college <laughs> pitch right, right in the middle. That's good. And he has shot up recently, so he's our college player. So when we play tournaments, it, I mean, there's five players on the court, but I mean, three of them will be on him. And so it was really neat to see then other players attack him, kind of. And he would somehow, I don't know, he would start bashing and yeah, then he would get out. Um, but it gave our other players a chance to get around to the big and shoot, too. So really, like, even though he can just sit here and do this from under the basket, um, it gave opportunity for all of the other players to be part of the team, you know, because some players, um, the team we were playing, they had a point person too, who was their tallest and main player. Um, so we kept blocking him, but then their players weren't as good of a shot as some of ours. So anyway, um, it's just really exciting to see um, how everybody knows everybody. We'll start to dancing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, most of our kids, so you can see they're all different colors. So I'll say when we first started the team, I mean, we bought 10 chairs. Um, so that was a huge fundraiser effort to buy 10 mm -hmm. chairs. Um, and as you can see on her chair, it's a little beat up, but it's really in decent shape. So I remember unboxing them, um, lining them all up by size and all the things. And then the first practice, this little girl and then Eva just started banging into people. And I was her kind of like, oh, it's just a couple dollars. <laughs> um, but that's what it's for, right? Um, she's like, you might as well break it in today. So <laughs> I'm like, um, but anyway, our chairs, we, they're different colors. So this happened, um, Atlanta's in one of our team chairs, but you can see like Ruth has an orange chair, Monty has a blue chair, and a lot of the times they receive grants from Challenge Athletes Foundation or other different organizations that help them um, pick out, customize. I mean, they're big decisions, like whether you're going to get black wheels or orange wheels or what your focus you're going to look like. I mean, there's more um, into it than you think, and it's really neat that they can customize them and have their own chair to um, grow with them. So, Brandon, how many chairs do you have? Three? Or two? Three? Just two. Just two. But some of our players, have to, they're in their third chair just because of their growth as they get older. Um, I think Joe in the back, he's in, he's probably in the third or fourth. He's not as tall. Only fourth, yeah. So, just different by sizes. Um, so, with our fleet of chairs, we get them back if the player's done with them to save for somebody else. And right now, I have six really tiny chairs. Those are our first chairs. Um, and so it's just kind of funny to see the growth of, of the team. But anyway, um, that's why we continue to build. Um, the Barberstone grant was uh, exciting because we're purchasing a larger chair for next season for hopefully a new player that comes and doesn't have a chair of their own. Um, so we just try to mix and match them and provide different sizes. Does anybody um, have any other comments you want to talk about basketball and how? <laughs> um, I would say that um, you do you can't get injured. Um, also, even though you're in a chair, this young fella right here um, hurt himself pretty bad at practice. Um, <laughs> so, you want to talk about that? And like, if it was he probably doesn't remember. It, it was painful. <laughs> so I he flipped backwards and hit his head. Even though there's the, the wheelie bar in the back, it doesn't matter. It depends. You can still flip them and go different ways. Um, I just want to add in, they were rough out after practice. Yeah, So you can get hurt, and we really um, try to be mindful of all of that with our own team and then playing against other players. So we don't want to. We're not that kind of thing. <laughs> we really try not to be with anybody, but I want to say the same for all of them. <laughs> but, but I think our team is really well rounded. Um, we all have good, show good sportsmanship and a great athletes. So that's one of my favorite things um, about our team. Yeah. And we're not going to always go to the team. Does anybody have any questions for the players or for myself? Um, are you thinking about people that you work with that might be appropriate? Uh, are you all interested in the wheelchair sports like rugby or tennis or pickleball for your future? So, um, our head coach, uh, Jeff, he's the guy on the right, he plays wheelchair tennis. And I'm pretty sure Clemson has a team, right? And, um, Thompson University is also starting a wheelchair basketball team. I don't know about pickleball. So, so for pickleball, um, we're partnering with you <laughs> with Greenville County to do adaptive pickleball tournament uh, next. Um, so for you can I'll say the Rolling Tigers is our only competitive team, like our only team that we have. But we do all of these different intro clinics um, and, and continuing programs for people with disabilities. So, for example, um, pickleball is something that we play with the same type of all-court chair, um, and we do different clinics for those. And they may or may not be on the same the days that I gave you, um, but we're adding things all the time to to our program. Um, we all we do adaptive cycling um, is one of our sports that's getting ready to start tonight. <laughs> um, so we do that as well. 
And then we do water skiing, alpine skiing. Um, what else do we do? Blood hockey. Forgot lots of stuff. Ball. And you'll have a great monthly newsletter that comes out with all the information and how to register for your event. I knew that we post that on our site and promote it to our group as well. So I don't know how people get signed up for that. I just at some point. So on the flyer, um, you'll either email myself or another recreational therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're interested or just even have any questions about sending someone our way to sign up for a clinic, all of our clinics and um, sessions are free to the community. So our Adapt Sports Program in general is philanthropy funded. Um, so I never to provide those opportunities. Um, I received grants or I think I've shipped out 10 of them in the last few months. So I got my fingers crossed for <laughs> some of that, but it helps um, provide equipment for our entire program. Uh, which is the main cost and then maintenance of all of those things, um, provide a program and equipment to pay fees or anything like that for coaches. So, but if in your groups that you work with or your organizations, if you um, think that you know of anybody that might be interested in adaptive sports, I would love for you to pass them on to us. Um, and I mean, we can have conversations with them if they just have intro questions, or anybody's welcome to just come look and see too. They don't actually have to try to participate if they're nervous. They can get in their comfort zone and kind of see if it's for them first before they actually get into a piece of uh, that equipment or whatever the um, session is. <clears throat> Any questions? Yes. I don't have a question, but I just want to say uh, congratulations. I thought you were going to get part two this morning. Um, I think this is going to want to vote. Yes, sir. You're very articulate. You did very good job. Congratulations. How was it? Yeah. <laughs> 
it, it's been a huge blessing, not just for Brantley, but for the whole family. And if Brantley did it, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. If we didn't have this team, like we wouldn't have any of these parents. It was a lot I think she's like not Olivia because the first practice she showed up with was such a sweet, tiny little baby. <laughs> 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 and he was just called, but fun to watch. And girls as well. But um, I didn't hurt random. Um, you know, there's a variety of um, you know, level of positivity for um challenges that they have. Um, he was totally healthy before he got sick and enjoyed playing sports. And so to have all of that taken from him. You know, when he got sick, it was very difficult. And it was actually in the hospital that we met Lindsay. And um, she recommended a wheelchair basketball for him because it was just starting that fall. And honestly, like, I feel like, oh, like you're going to have to take him because I can't handle <laughs> He was so fragile. Like, um, he's gotten a lot stronger, but um, he was right handed before he had to switch to left handed so he could help himself at one point. Um, it, it was honestly terrifying because it's not just a set of little kids and it's not worried, like it's so terrifying, especially in my day. Um, you know, he, he needed that, and it's been such an outlet for him. Um, he could be needed things to be adapted for him to be able to keep up, but yet he needed, you know, with like, um, you know, traditional like a recess or something at school, he needed having things being adapted mm -hmm. just for him. So to have that playing field level um, has been huge. And he, I mean, it was just a couple of years in before he scored, it was, I think he kind of said a big under. Very excited about that, of course. And, um, you know, so just to sit in, it's like a world of infant gratification to have to work and work and work and work at something, you know, to get to be able to have, you know, have that sweet success when you do. I don't know if you're going to be a quarter. You know, something like that has been, you know, such a gift. You know, as many have said, like, just that community of parents who, um, who understand, like, it's, it's very difficult to explain the ins and outs of their day life to someone that doesn't have a child with a disability. Um, you know, not, not that people aren't compassionate, but just there are things that are just difficult for them to worry. So I think for them to have each other and for the parents to have each other and um, you know, again, to see how that for her and then, you know, people who, you know, come on and support you as well, it's just some of the support that we've seen from the community and everything else, but also Nelly, Nelly on my phone. Yeah. And to add on to that is Sophia also didn't start off in a wheelchair. She has a uh, progressive neuromuscular disorder. And so within the last three years, her body went from being able to fully rock climb and like 60 feet up fast. She was uh, wanting to be a competitive rock climber to that afternoon. She had a, a headache and within three weeks, she had lost the ability to walk very far. She, within that three week time frame, she went from competitive rock climbing to walking 10 feet further and her legs would buckle. So three years later now, we being able to see her have that competitive drive in the end. And he, when she was rock climbing, her goal was always to be the fastest, to be the best, and the most incredible. She has an older brother and a younger brother, both are very, very good at it too. So to see that competitive drive back in her is amazing. Like she loves to ram people. Um, uh, we have to remind her of her games of ramming correctly. Uh, not so that way she doesn't get foul, but I think the greatest day ever will be when she gets enough foul to be considered almost fouled out. That will be that will be the highlight of the day. There's there's one um girl Rue on our team. She's we we brought her sometimes for a foul. I'm saying because she's so quiet and dainty, you know. But then she'll get a foul. She's like. <laughs> Anyway, I'll say, um, is, is anyone else having any other questions? I'll say, um, it's been an honor to be part of the team. I think I'm not allowed to, but the small things in everyday life. Um, I was looking back through pictures the other day trying to find something for here, and I found one, um, of why it was like little guns, you know, like going after somebody who was like eight feet taller, just like 
it's just really exciting to be part of them. And the fact that they're here today to talk about what um, they're passionate about makes me really proud too um, with their growth. And so thank you guys so much. And I hope that you take everything that you learned about the team and pass it along to the community um, to help us just bring awareness um, and also to find some new players um, will be really exciting. And then if anyone has questions about adaptive sports in general that Roger C. Peace um, provides that the flyer doesn't answer for you, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.